Hi there, thanks for checking out route optimization. In this video, we'll cover how to create an optimized route, including the required setup, as well as optional setup constraints. First, we'll need to make sure that route optimization has been enabled for our organization. So let's just jump up to our organization settings. And along the left-hand side, we'll scroll all the way down to add-ons. Next, we'll find route optimization from the list here. Available features are based on the pricing plan for your organization. So if you see an upgrade required where this toggle switch should be, you'll need to first upgrade in order to access route optimization. Route optimization is our automated route planning engine that is ideal for organizations that utilize a scheduled delivery model. Route optimization considers a number of constraints, all of which can be configured in Onfleet, which we'll go over here. So let's actually get into the required setup pieces. So first, we'll need to make sure that we have set up both teams and hubs. So what are teams? Teams are a way of grouping your people operations and can represent many different organizational units uh, that you want. So many folks like to use teams to represent a market or geographic area like San Francisco North or these different San Francisco neighborhoods, for example. Um, you can also use a sort of operational or labor unit. So uh, by organizing your people operations by your contract drivers versus your employees is another option. So one thing to note is that both drivers and dispatchers can live on more than one team at once. So it's definitely okay to be creative um, and be very flexible with how you're creating these team structures. Now let's talk about hubs. Hubs represent a physical location on the map. So this could be a distribution center or a, rare, a warehouse, a restaurant, or something like this. Hubs can be assigned to one or more teams. However, teams can only be assigned to one hub at a time, and they are only visible to the administrators and dispatchers assigned to that same team. You'll see that when we are running a route optimization, you'll be able to choose operationally to have the routes start and end at this central location. So next, let's look at some of the optional setup pieces. So we're going to first look at an individual task, and I'll point out some different sort of task constraints that can be set up. So one thing to note is that uh, the things I'm going to be going over in this task modal will be somewhat manual, but if you are utilizing the API for an integration or an import sheet, you can make sure to populate that information so that it's coming in automatically, so you won't be going through this manual process that I'm pointing at. So first I wanna point out this quantity field here. So quantity will be used together with a vehicle capacity on the driver profile. Um, and so whatever unit you decide to use, we're very flexible. We allow you to use any unit. Maybe this is boxes or parcels. It could also be feet or meters. Um, but whatever unit you decide to use on the task quantity will need to be the same unit of measure used for the vehicle, the driver vehicle capacity. Okay, so we'll get to that just in a moment. The next task constraint that I want to point out is a service time. So a service time describes the amount of time a driver is expected to spend at a task destination. So if there's any sort of consultation required or assembly required, um, you'll want to mention uh, an additional amount of time that the driver will spend on site. The last and final thing that I want to point out here is uh, the ability to create a delivery window. So using the complete after or end the complete before times together, uh, thus creates a delivery window that you'll be able to really optimize the entire route around potentially. So that's all for the task constraints. Next, let's jump into a driver profile and I'll show you the driver constraints. So I'll get into settings. Next, I'll click on drivers and I'll open up my driver profile. So here you see the vehicle capacity. So again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that whatever unit you have for this vehicle capacity also matches up to the task, uh, to the uh, task quantity, excuse me. Um, so this again could be boxes, parcels, envelopes, bags, meters, feet, whatever this unit is, just make it consistent across both the task quantity and the driver capacity. Next, you'll be able to set individual driver schedules here. So keep in mind that driver schedules can also be updated via the API. So if your company has a scheduling system and you want those to come in automatically, you can have that happen. 
If you need to set up a sort of morning shift and an afternoon shift, so create a split shift for your drivers, you can use this plus button to the side to indicate a shift, uh, AM and PM, so on and so forth. You can also set a default schedule, so you don't have to do this one by one for each driver. And I'll show you, I'll highlight this when we're running the optimization, how you can access that default schedule. So now that we've covered uh, the required and optional setup pieces, let's actually get into running an, a real optimization. So first I'm going to make sure that my filters are reflecting a day in the future like tomorrow, as we will be running our optimization for the future. Next, I will want to make sure that I am considering all of my unassigned tasks or whatever tasks that I want to use. One thing that I want to point out is that you can run the optimization from the map and the sidebar as well as from table view. So table view is a great place to be if you have an especially high volume of tasks that you're working with. You can select, you know, all of your unassigned tasks, for example, and choose to optimize here. For today's purposes, I'm going to jump back to the map and we're going to run the optimization from here. So first I'm going to select all of my unassigned tasks by using the keyboard shortcut Command A. And now I will right click and choose to optimize these 26 tasks. So you can uh, you know, choose the date that you wish to optimize. By default, the date is going to pick up the current dashboard filter date. So I moved that a day in the future and that's why it's reflected here. Next, you'll want to make sure that your time zone is set correctly. So the time zone, again, is also going to default to the dispatcher's current time zone. Dispatchers can edit the time zone for the route optimization by selecting it from the dropdown here. Now you will select the drivers that you want to have considered for this particular optimization. Up to 100 drivers can be selected at one time. So just keep in mind that if you're running an optimization with more than 100 driver drivers, you'll want to split that into multiple optimizations. I'm going to choose to select all of my drivers here. If drivers have individual schedules, they will be used in the routing solution. If individual schedules have not been defined and these drivers are all using the default schedule, you can choose to you know, set this default schedule differently. Um, you can even set the default schedule to reflect a shift like I showed you before by using this button here. If you wish to update a driver's schedule before the optimization, all you need to do is click this pencil icon just under the driver name and there you'll be able to edit the individual driver schedule. Okay, so once we have the driver schedules looking great, let's move on and we're going to scroll down to this max task per driver. So this is setting the upper limit to the number of tasks assigned to each driver. Next, I want to point out the global service time here. So the global service time is again, um, the amount of time that we're adding to a driver uh, it's the amount of time that the driver is expected to spend on site at the pickup and delivery location. So if you did have any per task uh, service times, the global service time will actually be overridden in the calculation. Next, you're going to want to say how you want these routes to start and end from. So you do have some options. The following options are you can have these routes start from anywhere, the team's hub, the driver's address, or a specific hub location. The same thing for ending your route. Um, you have the same options here. Finally, you're going to choose your optimization mode. So let's talk about what some of these things mean. This first option to always arrive on time means that the routes that are created will strictly adhere to the task delivery windows. So if you are populating task delivery windows using the complete after and complete before time, the routes that will be created will really strictly adhere to these. Nothing will be delayed. Next, the option of balancing uh, the driving time and arrival times means that the routes that are created will balance those two options. Your final option here to minimize drive time means that routes that are created which minimize the total number of miles driven by your workers. So this will reduce the overall cost to complete the route. However, it might allow for some violations in your complete before and complete after time windows. So just something to consider here. For my optimization today, I'm going to balance these options. All I have to do is to click proceed 
and we will go through a process of checking for any warnings or errors. So these warnings you'll be able to fix in line um, and any errors that you might come across will need to be totally fixed before you can move forward. For today's purposes, I'm going to simply just proceed even though we have a couple of warnings that we can fix. I'm going to just proceed for today's purposes and confirm. Now, depending on how large of an optimization this is, this might take a couple of minutes. So just try to be patient. Today, it won't take very long because I don't have a huge amount of tasks to distribute. And here we have that the tasks have been assigned across my drivers. You'll see that everyone has about a balanced load here. If you want to see a particular driver's specific route, you can click on the driver profile and you will be able to see their entire route from start to finish. You'll also be able to see some estimated times of completion as well as arrival times. So by clicking these little flags over here on the particular tests, I will be able to see you know, when this task will be uh, arriving, this delivery will be arriving, versus when this task will be completed. And again, the difference between arrival and completed times will be that additional service time that gets added to the task. Okay, well that is it for route optimization. Thank you so much for joining us today.